The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 9th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I were going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past nine o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening at the normal time, we are recording today's show between nine and 10. We'll make it as pertinent as we can for you between 11 and 12 out there. Tomorrow, we'll be back to the normal programming time. But if you are listening live, I would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you are listening live between 9 and 10, and you can't call in, but you've got a question, Stevie's got your back. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put a radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with a mixed uh, market with regard to equity futures. You've got the Russell trading down about three points. Otherwise, the ES Mini up 11, NASDAQ 100 up 63, and the Dow futures are up 20. Over in Asia last night, it was a mixed bag there. You had the Hang Seng down, uh, well, it's a bit flat, but it's still down one point. The other two indices, the Nikkei up 800 points, 2%, one and a quarter points for the uh, Shanghai out there uh, this morning right now at 9.08 a.m. You've got the FTSE down 43 points, DAX down 142, Gold's up five bucks silver's up 28 cents uh you got copper that's down a penny platinum's off six bucks uh, take a look at the U.S. dollar index. Uh, it's up uh, 10 cents as we speak right now. 30-year and a 10-year note is trading down uh, just slightly, about 12, 12 ticks for the 30-year uh, and uh, just slightly for the uh, 10-year out there. Uh, let's begin our day, since I'm doing the uh, 9 o'clock before futures have opened. Really how I start off the newsletter each day is trying to understand what's going on in the uh, world, what's going on across, across the globe. So we're going to start with what does uh, take place overseas last night. And I'm going to change windows here. And you're going to see five different uh, charts that we're going to take a look at. And we'll look at each of them just to, oh, you know, before we do that, I'm going to stay on the screen here. I had mentioned if you caught the uh, 9 a.m. update out there, the correlation between the DAX and the uh, NQ out there. So the top portion of the screen is the uh, DAX. The bottom port or the center portion, I should say, is really the NQ. And then below that are the uh, are the uh, correlations. The bars that are above zero tell us about a directional correlation, meaning they both will typically move in the same direction. Bars below zero. Uh, an inverse relationship. Now, most of the bars here, I've got this set to a three-day setting out there, a three-day average, which is about as tight as you uh, can get out there. Um, and you can see still we've got probably 85% of the bars are above zero, so you've got that directional correlation. So it's good to understand what the DAX is doing. I would have to say the DAX here, which is trading below yesterday's low, the prior day's low, likely headed for that little rising trend line out there. In the case of the NQ, you can see a number of different trend lines. So I just wanted to put that out there before we go ahead and switch over and take a look at the uh, daily time frames for what's going on in some of the international markets. So we're going to begin here now. In fact, let's just actually begin by taking a look at the DAX. We'll start from right to left out there. So if we take a look at the DAX, what do we know about it? First, we've got to expand it out. So we can see here that um, our price is trading and they, you know, has got a descending trend line out there that's acting as resistance. It was tested yesterday. It was tested on Friday out there. And right now, what the DAX is doing is testing a very key level of support. That's called the oscillator and change line. Remember, on the other chart, we were looking at a rising trend line. I don't have that drawn in here. But if price does close the day, 
below uh, 18, 333. Odds would favor a further move lower out there, and that further move lower would likely go test that rising trend line that we took a look at. So that's what's going on right now over in uh, Germany. We take a look at what's going on in the UK. Um, you've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the uh, downside out there. Now, I don't have that drawn in here. You can see that in the case of the FTSE, you've also got a set of um, a descending trend line that's acting as a resistance level. Now, the key level of support here is going to be the uh, low from July 2nd out there. And if price were to close below that low, that would be at the 810679 level out there. Then we'd likely see much lower price out there. And you'd see a larger A to B equals CD pattern that would look like this. We draw in our A point, we get down to uh, this uh, level right there. Yep, that looks about right. I'm just simply going to move this area here so you can see where that A to B equals CD projection would be, which would get us down around the 7940 level. That is not the call, but that would be the call if we do get a close below that July 2nd low. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the FTSE. Let's go take a look at the Nikkei. This thing is on fire out there. If we take a look at what transpired today. What transpired today was first on a daily time frame, uh, price negated its TD9 count top. Uh, it's got an A to B equals CD pattern uh, to the upside, but we're going to take a look at that when we really look at this because here price has taken out a prior swing point high from March 22nd. Now, before we draw that A to B equals CD pattern, what Stevie wants to do is turn this to a weekly time frame chart. So on the weekly time frame chart, what's still going to show up on that oscillator and change line is the daily time frame. So let's not ignore that. So now we take a look at the Nikkei here. Look at this gigantic A to B equals CD pattern that is likely – not guaranteed just yet, but likely setting up on a weekly time frame. Why is it not giving us that confirmed message right now? The reason is because we have to close above that swing point high on Friday. It doesn't matter where we're trading at as we speak. I mean, it does matter a little bit, but it doesn't really matter until Friday out there. So that says that if the Nikkei is able to close above the high from March in 2022, that's at 38,960. We close at 41,850. That's going to set up first. That B to C retracement, that is a uh, less than a point. Uh, that's a maybe a point three eight two. It's not anywhere near a point six one eight. But the one to one A to B equals C D price projection inside the Nikkei will get us up towards the uh, 47, uh, 312 uh, area out there. I would say more likely than not, this would do more than a one to one. Now, on a weekly time frame, there's a road momentum indicator signal that's triggered. What that means is just simple. Uh, just uh, if there were to be a bearish reversal candle, then that would identify a top. It would negate this A to B equals CD pattern, at least for the moment out there. So the Nikkei is absolutely on fire, no matter whether we take a look at the daily or the weekly time frame. Let me just uh, switch this back here to the daily so I don't forget to do that. Now, we take a look at the Hang Seng. The Hang Seng has an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Has not completed that. The 1 1 price projection gets us down to about the 17093 level. If we were to get down there and form a, a bullish reversal candle, that would be a Gartley buy pattern. And finally, if we take a look at the Shanghai, the Shanghai has two different roads momentum indicator bottoms. One formed today, one formed a couple days ago when it formed this bullish hammer candle, which was tested earlier in the day. Price here is closed above its oscillator and change line. I would say that the uh, Shanghai is headed towards its recent swing high. That's on July 2nd, up at about the 3150 level. And if price closes below that, we'll see a move up to the 318470 area. And that is what's going on across the globe in the international markets. Now, we come back from this break here. We're going to go take a look at the currencies out there, the U.S. dollar index. We'll certainly take a look at the yen, see what its message is to us. We'll take a look at a few currencies, uh, sorry, currencies a few commodities as well, before we start diving down into the equity futures. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. If you are listening live, it's uh, 918 in the morning. If you're listening at the normal time frame, uh, we're just recording today's show early. Back to the normal programming time come uh, tomorrow on Wednesday. We're looking at the uh, currency pairs out here. We're not going to spend a ton of time there, but I'll give you just an overview of the uh, top three, four out here. We'll take a look at the euro. Uh, the euro has formed a small A to B equal CD pad on the upside. It's already attained the one to one level. That just simply says if there were to be a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a Gartley sell pattern. Short of that, price should likely move higher. We can see yesterday's action out there. Price exceeded the prior day's high, but did not take out the prior day's low out there. So that's more of a bullish than a bearish signal out there. Today's candle just trading inside yesterday's body, so not giving us much of a clue. In the case of the uh, Japanese yen out there, it does have a TD9 count top. That formed out here on July the 3rd. Uh, price did move lower. We can see that we're trading above yesterday's high. Odds favor move up to that oscillator and change line. That's in the 160-140 level. In the case of the Great British Pound, it formed a nice TD9 count bottom. Uh, uh, there's no pattern. There's no A to B equal CD pattern. Price is just simply trading into a prior swing point. And that's from June the 12th out there. So we know resistance up at the 1.286 level. And when we take a look at the Canadian loony out there, 9% weighting inside the U.S. dollar index. Been trading in a consolidation pattern really since the uh, uh, middle of April out there. I don't have anything to suggest that that's going to change anytime soon. Finally, we look at the U.S. dollar index. U.S. dollar index here, you can see trading below the bottom of its daily profile. As long as price Price remains above uh, below 104.81. It would signal that we're likely to see lower price if we look at the. Uh, now that's what it'd be signaling to us if we take a look at and break down the U.S. dollar index a little bit further. Take a look at its weekly time frame. 
it's kind of hard to see, but uh, you can see the bottom black digit number on my weekly chart. Let me just expand it out. We're all looking at the same thing out there. Whoops. I got to do. Uh, that's not going to work because of a, a profile level. Shoot, son of a gun. Okay, so I'm going to come back here. What you've got is a new where price um, uh, last week where it found support was the bottom of its new profile. So the key level there is at 104.525 level. So even though the daily time frame is trading below the bottom of its profile, which would absolutely suggest lower price, we still have to recognize where's other areas of support, and that's on that weekly time frame. So it's really key in the case of the U.S. dollar index. Watch 104.52. If price closes below. Below that, then we're likely to see a move back to the uh, TD9 count breakout level for the daily time frame. That's at the 10325 level. So that's what's going on. We take a look at those currency pairs out there. I'm going to close out these charts if you don't mind, because I'm going to eventually switch here to a couple of different data feeds. But before we close out this uh, segment of the uh, show, what we're going to take a look at is the uh, is some of the commodities out here. So if we take a look at the September wheat contract, Septem September wheat still has a TD9 count bottom. That completed that pattern on the trading day of uh, June the 26th out there. And we've got prices simply consolidating with inside its daily profile. So we know where resistance is at. It's been tested at a cell. That's at 591.88 and support down at the uh, 563.78 level. So it's got a bottom with a consolidation pattern. If we take a look at uh, soybeans, soybeans still has at least at this moment in time, a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. Now, price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile at 1100.90, but you can see this Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom pattern that formed on July 1st. Only a close below 1097, which was tested this morning. We're still trading just below that level right now, but a close below at day's end 1097 would negate that signal, and that would suggest lower price. If that holds, then what you really are looking for is can price get back inside its profile, close above 1100. Point nine zero. If we take a look at uh, corn, corn yesterday negated its uh, TD9 count bottom pattern. Let's open up this chart here. Let's put this on a weekly time frame. Again, the oscillator and change line will remain as a daily time frame, but everything else will uh, convert over. So it looks to Stevie like uh, price wants to continue to move even lower when we take a look at corn. It does have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that is present, but that needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm its bottom. So corn looks like it wants to move a bit lower out there. I won't put in the A to B equals CD patterns. But my guess is Larry has uh, identified that and probably shared that during his show. Now we've got coffee that is totally in a breakout mode as we speak today. Uh, it was trading in a consolidation pattern out there. You can see that. We're breaking through that consolidation. That would suggest then that we at least have a measured move. A measured move when you break out of consolidation, either to the upside or the downside, you have a measured move that's equal to or greater than the consolidation. Well, the equal to... Uh, would take us up towards the uh, 258 level. But we can also see we have an A to B equals CD pattern. That A to B equals CD pattern gets us to 263. Now, look, none of these are going to matter unless we see a close above that recent swing high out here from April the 18th out there. That's your resistance point. So what you're looking for today and or tomorrow or the next day is a close above 243.30. We're trading above that right now. Do we close above that at the session end? I don't know the answer. But if we do, we're likely to see coffee continue to motor up towards that 257 to the uh, 264 or 263 area out there. We take a look at uh, sugar. Uh, sugar has a sell the D point pattern. Here's the A to B. We'll just simply expand this out. It did form that Three River Evening Star. But what price has done and it's testing right now is the bottom of its bullish structure profile. I would expect that uh, that sugar will hold this level, this level being 1984. But if it doesn't, then obviously we'd be headed lower. That's a bullish structured profile. And again, more likely than not, sugar holds support. We take a look at uh, cocoa. Cocoa for cuckoo puffs, it does not have any kind of a, uh, well, I take this back. Let me just see. Uh, it does have a, a t a t it does have a TD9 count bottom. But price continues to find resistance at that oscillator and change line. And that's at the 79.60 level. Above that, 82.52 is the top of its profile. Price were to close above that, we'd be looking at a move up to the 97.96 level out there. So there's your commodities. There's your international markets. There's your currency pairs. And now it's time for us to start moving on and taking a look at the U.S. equity futures contract. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just, just take me a moment. 
shifting the uh, uh, data feed out here so that we're taking good, accurate data. And now let's go take a look at the daily time frame for the U.S. equity future contracts out here. Now, the daily charts, what we're going to notice, you're going to have the ES mini in the upper left. You're not going to see any kind of a topping signal out there. Roads momentum indicator signal uh, certainly present yesterday. I don't know if that is still the case, but one way for Stevie to find out real quickly here. So let me go take a look at my indicator and see where I've got that setting. Ah, that's not the right setting. Here we go. Is that it? And we've got, no, I got on price change. So interesting. So I think we have taken out yesterday's high. Yesterday's high in the ES being 56.37. Uh, 56.37.50. We're at 56.37.50 right now, but we did tick above that. So it's interesting here is this Roads Momentum Indicator uh, signal will, will will simply not exist. Well, it'll exist out there, but it won't be anything to worry about if we get a close above yesterday's high. Now, I'm not showing the A to B equals CD pattern here, but what I can share with you is the ES Mini has a initial price target of 56.78. So if we continue to trade above yesterday's high out there, odds favor, we're going to see move up to 56.78. Now, in the case of the NQ, it also has an A to B equals CD pattern. Again, not shown here. It's already exceeded the 1 to 1 level. The 1 to 1.272 is at 29.37. However, you can see that unlike the ES Mini, the NQ is in bar number 8 as we speak right now. So this could form a TD9 count top between today and Thursday. Of course, the bearish reversal candle would confirm a road momentum indicator top. That's what's going on with the ES and the NQ. We come back from this break. Uh, let's take, uh, we can always come back to these charts and intraday charts. Let's take a look at GORO for Marty, at TSM for G-Man. Great. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one strain of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Here, cash markets are open. Now you got the Dow trade down 38. S&P's up 11. NASDAQ 100 up 67. Russell's up 3. You got the semis up 33. So we got a good old mixed bag out there. Uh, what I did want to share with you before we go on and take a look at a couple of requests, uh, there is a new profile that is formed inside of the Russell 2000 equity future contract. So I want to be able to provide you with that support level, which is down to 20, 35, 90. And resistance up at 2074 uh, out there. So any of you that trade uh, that, uh, trade the Russell 2000, make sure that you're familiar with where those daily support and resistance levels are at. Now, let's go take a look at our first request. This actually came in yesterday. I wasn't able to get to it. Came in from Marty. Wants to take a look at ticker symbol G-O-R-O. -O. So G-O-R-O -O is... Um, is a good question. I don't know the name just yet. It'll pop up on my screen, I think, momentarily. But as we take a look at it, Marty, here we can see that price is trading below its daily profile. That's at 44 cents. It is finding support as we speak right now, down at the 40 cent level. If price closes below that, you're going to see a move lower. That move lower would be back to its recent uh, swing lows. This is Gold Resource Corporation out there. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, the weekly time frame, not that I see any kind of a top uh, topping pattern, but I do see an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So let's go ahead and draw that in out there. And I don't know if it's been confirmed by volume. We'll try to take a look at that here. So the A point going to be on the trading day of April the 5th out there there. The uh, low is going to be at the day of uh, May 3rd. So I'm just simply going to copy. I'm actually going to copy and paste. I'm just simply going to move this over to that uh, C point out there. I, I say I'm going to do that, but if I don't get my cursor, my mouse to, good Lord. <clears throat> uh, is that going to work? Okay. So I think the idea of taking a look, I can do this off screen. I'm going to have to do this off screen. I'll be right back with you. I'm not, not going away, but just trying to understand on the GORO on its uh, weekly time frame where that A to B equals CD pattern would take us to out there. Wow, that'd be a small A to B equals CD. Uh, but just give me a second here. I promise you I'll be here shortly. So the A to B equals CD pattern in the weekly time frame will get us down to the 31 cent level out there. And what we can see out there is that 30 cents is the uh, bottom of that weekly profile. Now, if you're to see a weekly close, Marty, below its red oscillator and change line, that's 40 cents on the weekly time frame. It's 40 cents on the daily time frame. So close below 40 cents is going to go ahead and suggest that we do get down to that 30 cent level. And on a monthly time frame, we just simply have a consolidation with inside its profiles. And that's between 26 cents and 47 pennies out there. So thanks for waiting an extra day on that. And if you have any other questions, uh, please give me a call and I'll be happy to take a look at that. G Man inside our Tiger's Den wants to take a look at uh, TSM. And uh, so let's take a look at that Taiwan semiconductor. Oops, TSM. Uh, so TSM uh, today trading at 187.96. Had a, a nice move yesterday, gap to the upside out there. It uh, does have a road momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. But yesterday's move negated a TD9 count top. So from a daily perspective out here, G-Man, this suggests that it wants to continue to move higher. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, what you'd really love to see this do, Taiwan Semiconductor, that is, is close above 184.86. We're at 188.10 now. Why? Because that would negate a TD9 count top. So you've got a, right now, a daily TD9 count top that failed yesterday. A weekly TD9 count top may fail on Friday, and that requires a close above 184.66. The monthly chart is in bar number eight of a TD9 count. That doesn't mean it's topping this month. It says it could top between this month and the next two out there, so between July and September out there. In fact, we've got a lot of monthly charts that are suggesting that their top uh, could be in uh, September out there. So maybe September is going to be pretty wild. Uh, you're looking for this to continue to move higher, I believe. Let's just take a look at a, a short-term chart, see what we have going on out here. Now, that's the 130-minute time frame chart that does have now. That oscillator change line looks like it's for a different time frame, probably the 30-minute. So you do have a TD9 count top out here on a 130-minute chart. Um, and you got a pretty wide profile. That wide profile ranged from 179.99. Well, the buy zone is between 179.99 and 181.82. And the uh, sellers are sitting at 189.14. And, of course, sellers are sitting at the top of that TD9 count top pattern at 
80, 192.80 out there. Now, that's the 30, 130-minute chart. Curious, what's the 65-minute chart show us out here? So we take a look at uh, daily um, uh, individual equities, folks. It's a 390-minute trading session. I always suggest that your bars be equal in time. That's why I use 65, not 60. If we take a look at equity futures or so forth, that's a different uh, a difference. Uh, so when we take a look at the 65-minute time frame chart, I really don't see. I see a wave number seven top. I take that back. I do see a top. But price found support at the top of its profile. So 185.08 would be an area to watch on a down side move and finally let's finish this off by take a look at that 30 minute time frame chart the 30 minute time frame chart there you go so now you got a td9 count bottom so i've given you what to watch to the downside in essence because of those topping patterns on the 65 and the uh, 130 out there but now here's the battle so on an even shorter term time frame g man you've got a td9 count bottom price has resistance key resistance at 188.84 if price can close above that that would suggest that taiwan semiconductor is going to continue to rally but again you're going to have to watch that uh, high from uh, yesterday uh, in the morning that uh, gap up in the uh, morning out there so hope that helps you out uh, g-man and if there's any additional information to leave uh, you need just please uh, let me know and i'll be happy to get to that let's go take a look at uh, bby uh, this is for Mo inside the Tiger's Den. It's looking to exit this at about the $72 level. So let's get up those charts. That is Best Buy out there. And so first you've got, what do you have? What I have, I don't have a bottom pattern. So that's the first thing. What we do have is we have price trading with inside a bullish structure daily profile. So you're looking to get to, you want to exit at 70 you, oh, so you must have a short position. I thought you said wanted to exit at 72. So I don't have a, a top out there. Let me just tell you what, what this is because I may not have written it down uh, right. And oh, you've got the uh, long 85 puts. Okay, you're looking at 93. So I wrote down the, the whole wrong. It's wrong 93. Looking to exit. Okay, so you're looking for this to get down to 72. Well, the first <laughs> thing that you need to know is this bullish structured profile is going to be the first block uh, to be able to get you down to the 72 level out here. So uh, is there a top in place out here for Best Buy? You know, on the daily time frame, I don't really see it. I just see it trading lower at this stage. And right now with inside that new profile, that profile formed about three or four days ago. The key level for you to watch on the downside, I'll give you two of them, 81.58 on the daily time frame, and also the swing point from July 2nd out there, and that's down at 80.53. Those are levels that price are going to need to close below for you to get down towards the uh, gap. I think that's what you were looking for as this uh, huge gap to the upside. Now, that's a big sign of strength. There were 13 million shares, four, almost 14 million shares that traded uh, then. You know, as price was pulling back on July 2nd, obviously holiday, but only 3 million shares. Yesterday on that move higher, it was about 4.7 million shares. So a very strong gap to the upside. If we look at the uh, if we look at the uh, weekly time frame chart out here, we can see that price is also consolidating with inside its daily profile. Again, I don't see a, a topping signal out there. That doesn't mean that the patterns that I use are always present at tops or bottoms. But when they are, we certainly pay attention to them. So here, 81.51 is going to be your key level of support. If price starts trading of 86.39. That's the center of its profile. That would suggest to move up to 91.28. Of course, in order for that to happen, price is going to have to take out the daily profile resistance. That's it. Monthly chart here looks pretty good. Why? It's trade about resistance. The resistance of its daily the monthly profile is 78.47. So, Mo, I hope that helps you out. Continue to watch those resistance levels. That first key one being 86.81. Get a close above that, you're likely on the wrong side of the tree. See Robin Woods in the net. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today.
TFNN Educating Investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the uh, semiconductors trading up uh, 36 points today. This is going to be an important day for the semis. Why is that, uh, Stevie? Well, first, if you close above the high from June 18th out there, that is at uh, 57.9286, it will negate its TD9 count top. So that's the first thing that you want to watch. Yes, price has triggered a uh, Rhodesman to indicator signal, but that's going to require a bearish reversal candle to confirm that top. Uh, if we do close above the high from uh, June 18th out there, again, that high being 57.9286 at day's end, likely we go ahead and continue to move higher. Now, the one thing that could get in that way, perhaps by weekend, is a, a TD9 count pattern. The TD9 count, because of today's gap, uh, we have a uh, gap to the upside. It has now triggered the bar following a TD9 count topping pattern. So that is going to go ahead and complete no matter where price closes at week's end. This is the bar following bar number nine out there. So uh, that would say whatever the weekly high is, if we come in next week and price is trading above that high, well, then this pattern will have failed miserably and uh, done it immediately. And that would suggest a strong upward momentum move for the semi. So we certainly want to keep an eye on that. You can see on the monthly time frame chart on the very right hand side, uh, we are in bar number eight. Again, many of the monthly charts that we look at suggest that you could top between July and September out there. Um, so the semis may be one of the ones that give give us a really good clue come next week with regard to how they're trading. But the weekly is going to have a, a TD9 count top. Uh, the uh, monthly, you know, maybe, but who knows out there. And the daily right now could negate that TD9 count out. 57, 92, 86, the level to be watching there. Uh, ELO inside our Tiger Stand wants to take a look at uh, Decker's Outdoor. D-E-C-K is the uh, ticker symbol. So in the case of Decker's Outdoor, top with the TD9 count pattern. It did that on June the 3rd. That was bar number eight out there. It negated a TD9 count bottom pattern. Um, almost immediately on June the uh, 21st, that continued its move lower. You are now trading inside of Decker's Outdoor ELO with inside its daily profile. It's a bullish structured profile, so I would say odds favor that Decker's is going to go target the 961.78 level. That is the top of its daily profile. If price could close above that, even though I don't have any kind of a bottom pattern out there, um, 
and price still hasn't closed that gap to the downside. This had a gigantic breakout on the trading day of May 24th. 949,000 shares traded hands that day. Uh, give you an idea, a couple days ago when we were pulling back was 178,000 shares. But nonetheless, you are consolidating with inside that daily profile. If you did close above, or if it did close above 961.78, then you'd be looking at a move up towards that oscillator and change line. The print at the moment at 9.45 a.m. is at 978.86. The weekly chart out there is uh, trading above profile but below its oscillator and change line tells us it's lost its momentum but still above uh, resistance which is up at 915.78 so that says that is a support level on a move lower uh, you're not going to have to worry about a move lower unless you see a close below that 927.75 area on a monthly time frame chart on any kind of a topping signal, I have price that is testing the top of its profile. The top of the profile is exactly at 956.17. If price were to close below that level out there, then we'd be likely looking to move back to the 878 area. So how are we going to summarize Decker's Outdoor? Let's do it like this. Let's, uh, we'll do a couple things. Number one, let's take a look at its, uh, its uh, daily dance steps out here. You can see this thing move lower for 7, 8, 9... Um, 10 looks like 10 I don't have the numeric system set up for all those moves to the downside so a significant move lower ELO this tells us about a strong momentum move to the downside then what do we get we got a two day rally and then price continued to move lower what was yesterday yesterday was a two day rally maybe you get a third day out here but right now and typically you get these knee jerk reactions out here so we're in a descending trending market right now with regard to decor at least for the daily time frame and typically, those knee-jerk reactions are two to four bars out there. So I'd just simply be paying attention to that as you're trading Decker's Outdoor. Is there anything else that I can provide with to you? Well, the only other thing I can think of, and let's see if I don't know if there's any data for Decker's Outdoor. Let's try Stevie's seasonal patterns out here. The seasonal patterns, let's go ahead and put in D-E-C-K, see if the instrument pops up. If it doesn't, well, then I've just wasted your time, but it does. So I haven't wasted anything. Now what we want to do is go take a look at how much data we have. We have 30 years worth of data out here, ELO. And let me just go, I've got that detrending tool up. So this suggesting on a average over 30 years, price typically moves lower into about the middle of July. So it's like next week, uh, the end of next week or the beginning of the following week. Then typically this has a rally, some type of rally up into the middle August time frame before it moves lower into November. So that's the season no pattern now that's over 30 years do we have a, a difference over 15 years if we cut that in half well the 15 year chart says yeah you could still get a rally into the end of july uh and then this would start moving lower into the november time frame so that's 15 years i don't think we want to really do anything much more than that out there so that's what i see with regard to decker's outdoor using all of our most of stevie's tools out there i hope that helps you out elo and the question is can stevie get this off of this chart here i can now the question is, can I actually reduce it? I don't know why I'm having trouble with my mouse, but I am. You don't really care about that. So that takes care of Decker's Outdoor. Do we have any other requests? Um, okay, I don't see anything in the Tiger's Den. Give me a moment, and I'll just see if I, anything is coming by email. And if not, I'm happy to, to go navigate on my own and see what's going on. In fact, what we can do is take a look at some intraday charts out there. Oh, we do have another request coming in. Take a look at XPEV. When will we see a bottom? I don't know, but let's go see what the stock charts tell us. XPEV, this is for GTE. And... Uh, when will this bottom? So we just got to wait for these charts here to populate. That'll take just a uh, another few moments out there. In the meantime, we see if there's any other requests that have come in. No, there's not. So that's it. So XPEV. Did I not get that right? XPEV. Oh, I put an XPEV. X, XPEV. Sorry about that. That's called Stevie not doing very well with regard to typing. And do it once. Take a look at ADMA. So we'll definitely have time to do that. So thanks uh, for your requests out there. Of course, you can always call in at 877-927-6648. Uh, at, uh, so GTE momentarily. Uh, since we have the right symbol up there, we ought to see what's going on inside of XPEV. And I'll try to answer, when will this form a bottom out here? So right now, price is trading into a buy zone. I know that doesn't tell you whether it's going to form a bottom or not. That buy zone is between 729 and 745, uh, 742, that is. That's on the daily time frame. I'm just going to expand out the daily chart, see if there's any kind of... So this already did form a bottom. It formed a Rosemontum indicator bottom back here on April the 22nd. The confirmation came on April the 26th out there. And now 
now what we really have is a consolidation inside of this instrument between its TD9 count breakdown level, that's at 970, and its TD9 count breakdown level at 694. So that's that's really your larger consolidation, a smaller consolidation with inside its daily profile, 729 to 782. So the daily has a bottom pattern out there. The weekly, see if there was an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. There is. That went ahead and confirmed the week of April 26. This also is consolidated with inside its profiles between 696 and 860. Your question was, when will this form a bottom? It already has formed a bottom on the daily and the weekly time frame. So I hope that helps you out. And as always, thank you for your request. Let's take, oh, we're going to go to a break here. So Stevie will go ahead and set this up. Our two requests that we've got right now how to take a look at ADMA, that's for dude. And John C. wants to take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract. We'll definitely do that. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we got the uh, Dow down uh, 124, S&P's up 12, NASDAQ 100 up 76, Russell is down uh, five points. So we definitely have a mixed bag out there. We're going to go take like a ticker symbol ADMI. Unfortunately, Stevie hit the wrong button out there. And uh, so these charts here for the semis are popular. We've already covered the semis and what to be able to watch for today. Uh, come on, two minutes to go. Would you guys populate already so I can move off of this out there? There we go. So 
Um, now we are back to ADMA, which is uh, Adma Biologics. So this uh, looks very bullish on the daily time frame, the weekly time frame, even the monthly time frame. On a, a weekly time frame, if you close above last week's high, last week's high was 1168 out there. Uh, dude, this wants to continue to move higher because that would negate immediately a TD9 count top. You're in bar number seven on a TD9 count pattern for the daily time frame. Roads meant to indicator signals trigger, but that requires a bearish reversal candle. We're above all resistance levels on the daily time frame. ADMA should continue to move higher. Bar number eight on that monthly time frame. Remember how many months monthly time frames have we seen in bar number eight out there? Suggesting a potential top between this month and uh, September out there. Maybe it's both. Maybe this month becomes a short-term top out there. But ADMA looks very strong. With regard to the Dow Equity Future contract out here, let's take a quick peek at it um does this get us there so here are all of the uh, dow instruments the dow equity future contract is in the upper left hand side and what we can see is a left hand panel it's just a consolidation with inside its uh, daily profile out there that's between 39 739 that's resistance that's proven itself now support is between the zone of 39090 and 39350 it's at 39350 level that would be a likely downside target should it continue to move lower if we take a look at the cash indice the cash indice like the daily uh, equity future contract Testing the screen oscillator and change line out there. So it looks to me, again, watch that 39,575 level. Price close below that, we're likely headed lower. And to close this show out, uh, folks, at, uh, take a look at uh, Nordic American Tankers. Trading below the bottom of its uh, daily profile, trading below the bottom of its weekly profile. Looks to me, Dan, like this wants to go target its most recent uh, swing point low from the weekly time frame. That would be down at about the 372 area. Folks, stay tuned. Basil Chapman is up next out there. Have a terrific Tuesday. Again, tomorrow I'll see you at the normal programming time on Wonderful Wednesday. Take care and be safe out there, folks.